Are you wondering if the Stream Deck Plus is right for you? I've been playing around with it for a few weeks now and I wanna share my thoughts and do I think this is actually worth the investment? I'll share who I think it's for and there is an unexpected surprise that I didn't see coming that I think some of you actually might really like. So let's get into it. But first, if you've never met me before, my name is Kat. I help people to stand out in virtual meetings and presentations. And the Stream Deck is a really big part of that. I use it every single day, but especially when I am presenting and I'm using it right now to create this tutorial. So let's see a side by side. This is my desk right now. And I have got out the 15 key Stream Deck. It's not plugged in right now, but I thought it would be a good comparison of a side by side. So you can tell that this Stream Deck Plus, it is taller and it's a bit wider than the 15 key Stream Deck. Now, if we take a look at how it's set up, you have eight buttons on the top. They are programmable just like every other Stream Deck. It also has a touchpad, which is connected to the dials, but also acts as navigation. So if I swipe, I can actually change pages just by swiping back and forth. The dials themselves, they can turn clockwise, counterclockwise, and you can tap on them. So if I tap, in this example with music, the dial adjusts the volume and tapping will mute it, but I can also tap up here and unmute. So there is some tap functionality connected to the dials. The other thing is that the dial has something that we call dial stack. And this is an example of a dial stack and you can tell it's hard to see here, but there are three little, three little dials on a dial stack. And if I, this initial dial on the top of the stack is my microphone. So if I wanted to turn down my microphone, I could use that, turn it back up. If I click on it, I can adjust the levels of my audio monitor. And if I click again, I have it set up so that I can actually adjust both my volume and my monitor at the same time. They'll go down together and go up. So that is a dial stack. Now how you program this is just like you would program any other stream deck, you are going to use the software. So here we have the software open and you can see that similar to other stream decks, you have all of the key options and functionality. You can also add in things. I have been using the Zoom plugin. I've got Keynote, etc. So there are different things you can add and you simply drag and drop the functions and set that up. I'm not gonna get into how to set that up today, but I do wanna show some of the dial features. Right now, it is fairly limited. You have Stream Deck, two options. System, two options. And then a Control Center and Wavelink, also two options. I can't access the control center for lights because I don't have any lights that are connected, so I can't adjust the brightness or temperature. But if you had those, that would be nice. I can adjust the Wavelink, and I'm gonna spend a little bit more time talking about the Wavelink software because that is something that comes with every Stream Deck Plus, and we'll get more into that later. So I can adjust, if I start a new page, I can drag, say, a dial stack over to the dial, and then I can set up what is in my stack. For example, if the first one was an audio input, I can select what is my audio input. So maybe I pick my microphone and I can say I want it to be the stream mix. Maybe I want to have a hotkey. So I can start to program this and decide what will I assign to counterclockwise? What will I assign to clockwise? And finally, what will I assign to press? So you can really start to customize this. And if you don't want a dial stack, you can just drag over the function you want and you can set that up. You can also assign a title. So that is how you do the actual customization and setting it up. You can also customize the background of this screen. So if I want four different backgrounds, for one for each dial, I can set this up like I would a typical icon. I can choose from a file or I have the option to create a background. But if you want one uniform touch strip, you can open the background library or pick your own. And this is where, so I have the stars right now, but if I wanted to, I could change it maybe to something blue, something turquoise. Obviously this doesn't show up that well on the, the live feed here, but you can get an idea of what works, what you like. Some make it really hard to see the actual instructions. So personally, I like having a little bit of a darker background. 
and you can obviously customize and choose your own. Now let's get into what I like. So there are a few things that I'm actually a really big fan of when it comes to this. So one is that I do like the, the bigger buttons. I don't know why, and it's not a huge difference, but there is a little bit more real estate with these buttons. The second thing, and this really stands out, I love being able to navigate with the touch strip. I think that saves you some buttons. So typically when I'm setting up my stream deck, I like to be able to press a button to change between profiles or pages or folders. With this, you can, you can really optimize using pages. You can still have different profiles for the stream deck. So maybe you have some that are for your presentations or productions and others that might be for everyday productivity. But again, you can just swipe through those pages to go side to side. And I think that's just really fast and just shaves off a little bit of time. The other thing is I like the physical form, meaning if we look at the shape of this, you can see how it's set up. And I actually really like when I'm presenting, I will typically have one hand on a stream deck. And so if I have this either in my right or left, I can kind of lean my hand, my fingers can fit behind it. And it's just really comfortable to actually hold. So those are some of the things that I really like. I also like the wavelength, but I'm gonna talk more detail about that soon. My wish list. This is the nice way of saying things I wish were different about the Stream Deck Plus. And one, I think they can change. The other, I'm not so sure. So let's start with the thing I don't think they can change. The buttons are pretty loud. Like pressing the button. So if we press, for example, open my YouTube studio, that to me is loud. I don't know how loud it'll be until I watch this back, but I can't figure out a quiet way to press these. With the other stream decks, I was able to figure out a way to gently press the buttons and they just weren't as loud. My microphone wasn't picking them up, but here, not only the buttons, the dials. So if I press this, I find, I find that loud. Now you've got the tap, which is nice, and the dials are not so bad, but the, the pressing, so if you have a dial stack, and you're live, you're presenting or recording, I don't think you wanna to wanna to press these. I actually ran a live training recently and I found that it was too distracting, so I did not use the Stream Deck Plus for that presentation. So keep that in mind. It will depend on the sensitivity of your mic. You might be able to also add a filter, like a high pass filter to keep down some of those lower frequencies, but that does take a little bit extra work to set up. The other thing on my wish list is more options for the dials. Right now it feels very limited. There's just not a lot I can do at the moment. So I'm really looking forward to developers getting in there, playing around with this and adding different plugins and being able to optimize that. I know that Elgato is going to update and then the store which ones are compatible with the dials. Now who do I think it's for? I actually kind of narrowed down to three groups that I think really do make a good fit. So the first one is if, if you have a pretty uncomplicated production, I think this could be a really good fit, meaning you don't need a lot of keys at the ready. If you have a pretty complicated production, you're probably gonna want something like the Stream Deck XL, which has 32 keys. You don't have to be swiping through pages. You don't have to be changing profiles. You have everything you need, it's all programmed. But I do think you can get by if you don't have a lot of different things you're doing. For example, I often will just jump to the next scene. That only takes a couple buttons. I can really set up a fairly simple stream or production using the eight keys or even just two pages. I can just swipe if I want to using the touch strip. Don't really have to pay too much attention. I think you can do that pretty quickly. And I do like the dials for controlling your audio. And if you're connected to your lights, that's another option. Now that is my next group. If you're an existing Elgato customer, meaning you have the key lights or you've got the microphone and you're already using the Wavelength software, then this is a pretty good setup because you'll now be able to use the dials to control the other Elgato products that you have. Now this brings me to the third, and this is the unexpected sort of perk that I did not expect when I bought the Stream Deck Plus, and that is Wavelength software. So let's dive in and actually talk about this because 
this has been a bonus. <laughs> so the Wavelength software has typically been for someone who has an Elgato microphone, like the Wave or Wave 3. And you have this audio mixing software, which will allow you to control different inputs. So if we take a look at the software, we can see that it is an audio mixing software, meaning you can pick different inputs at the top. So right now I have three different inputs. I've got my microphone, which is not an Elgato product. It is my Shure MV7 going through the Rodecaster. I have my music and I have audio from a browser. I can set these different levels in this software, but now with the Stream Deck Plus, I can actually control these levels with the dials. The output is also something I can control with the dials, and I have my monitor mix, and I also have my stream mix. The stream mix is what you are hearing right now, and I can adjust those levels. Now, previously, you could do all of this with the Wavelink software, and there were some options for setting these up with the keys, but some of these with audio levels, it really feels more natural to be using the dials. So if we take a look here, I can actually control the, if I control the music, you can see it going up and down. I can also push this button to mute it. And now it's subtle, but it's crossed out on the stream and have that come back. If I actually press, so if we go here, I've got a play button. If I start playing the music, you should be able to hear the stream beats playing in the background. So I can pause and play the music from here, but I can adjust the music. I can turn it higher. I can press mute by tapping or pressing on the dial and I can unmute. Now when I mute, you can see that it's still playing in the Wavelink software. I can also adjust this while it's muted, kind of bring it down and then I could always unmute that music. And if I want to pause, I can always actually stop the music, which you will see in the software, it's no longer playing. So the beauty of this is that I can control all of this without having to have my software open. When you look side by side, essentially, as soon as you've got the Wavelink configured, let's say we go here and we add an input action. This allows us to choose which of the inputs in Wavelink we want to control. So I could say, I wanna control my browser. And do I wanna control the monitor, the stream, or both? And maybe I wanna control my stream, that's what you will hear. Or if I said I wanna control them both, you will see both of them on the dial and I can control that dial together. So that's how you set up an input and then an output. I can say, do I wanna control my monitor mix? or the stream mix or both. And so if I wanted to say control the stream mix, I can do that and I can choose the step size. Do I want 1%, two, three, four, five? So if I want more subtlety, I go lower. And if I want to adjust that more quickly, I can do the higher step. So that's how you set that up and it's using the Wavelength software. The advantage and the reason I'm pointing this out is that the Wavelink software. So it's an audio mixer, but it's really an audio router. So if you've ever used something like Loopback to try and route your audio so that you can create a virtual microphone, you're essentially doing this with the Wavelink where I can actually choose the Wavelink stream, meaning that output, and I can have that as my microphone in say a Zoom meeting meaning I can actually start playing music into my microphone, my microphone, or I could be playing audio from something I'm screen sharing from my computer without necessarily turning on the computer audio. So this is a nice advantage that I think if you are in the market for a virtual microphone or an audio routing software, this mixing software will do that. And the nice thing is that if you own a Stream Deck Plus, you unlock the feature. So you download the software and if you have a Stream Deck Plus plugged in, then you are able to start using the Wavelink with any microphone. And so this to me is an advantage. Now, don't forget, if you are using this as a virtual microphone in say Zoom or any other web conferencing where they might automatically try to buffer your sound, you wanna turn on original sound because if you don't, as soon as you start to play music, they will say this isn't a voice and they'll probably dampen or kind of duck the music. It won't sound very clear. 
So you need to be conscious of that. But if you turn on original sound, you can talk into your mic, you can play your music, you can play other audio effects from your computer. One last thing I'll note is as a Mac user, I find there are some limits. <laughs> when I look at tutorials, they're often for Elgato focused on Windows users. There are more options for Windows users. So just be mindful of that when you start to either learn how to use the Wavelength software or as you are setting it up. But ultimately, I hope I've given you enough information, an overview of the Stream Deck Plus so you can decide, is this something that is right for you? Is it worth the investment? Or are you gonna stick with something else? But ultimately, I want you to have a tool that is going to help you to stand out in virtual meetings and presentations.